but we start talking skin care because I know there's rain in the forecast for the next couple of days. However, the beautiful weather will be returning and that means we need to protect our skin. But not just thinking sunscreen. There are other ways to do it. And I'm joined by Natasha Perutis, nutritionist. Welcome to the show, Natasha. Thank you. Great to have you here. And yeah, Natasha, I think when we think of skin care and protecting our skin in the summer months, uh, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is sunscreen. But before we even get to, to sunscreen and, and the importance of that, how, how does the sun affect our skin? Yeah, it's finally summertime, so those warm sun rays feel so good on our skin. Um, but unfortunately, uh, the sun causes skin aging and skin damage. Um, so we're constantly looking for ways to protect our skin. Um, so sunscreen, like you mentioned, of course, is our number one line of defense. Um, there's also some nutrients that we can add into our diet um, to give our skin some added support um, and protect ourselves against UV rays from the inside out. Your mic's just cutting out a bit on you there, Natasha, just to let you know. So just refresh your browser for us there. Okay. If you don't mind, yeah. Just do that quickly. Because Natasha's right. I mean, sunscreen, we all consider it right away, but sometimes we don't consider what we're putting in our bodies can make a, a big difference. And one of those things, Natasha, is collagen. Um, let's talk about, you know, how collagen affects it and where can we find it in different foods? Yeah, so collagen is a really important one. Um, it's the most abundant protein in our body. Um, so it helps to, it's like the scaffolding that holds everything together. Um, so we're looking for ways to add collagen back into our diet because unfortunately the sun's UV rays can actually accelerate collagen breakdown. Ways that we can add collagen back into our diet are protein foods. So bone broth and fish and chicken. Um, those are some great sources that will help give us the building blocks um, so that our bodies can actually make collagen. Uh, there's also vitamin C. So vitamin C is so essential for collagen synthesis. Uh, we need vitamin C for our bodies to make collagen. So vitamin C can be found, of course, in citrus, uh, fruit, uh, as well in peppers. Um, so these are really important to add into our diet. And there's also collagen peptide supplements. Um, they're a nice adjunct to your uh, morning routine. You can add them into your smoothie or into your coffee. Um, and if you're looking for a peptide supplement, look for one that has I hate added to, vitamin I hate D. to jump in again. Sorry, Natasha, you're breaking up so much. What we're going to ask you to do is maybe just disengage your Bluetooth and we'll just use your, your microphone on your device. Apologize to everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the virtual world of doing live television. So we'll just wait. As you can see, you know, Natasha has a huge display of, of different foods and, and different nutrients that are available. And, you know, when we also, when we think of things, we always go towards supplements, but we can find different things in these foods that can work much better. So uh, part of that too, Natasha, was, you know, when we saw the collagen, you also had, you know, vitamin C up there. I imagine that's also an important nutrient that you can find. Yeah, so vitamin C is so important for collagen synthesis. Uh, it can be found in citrus fruits and uh, citrus fruits, as well as um, bell peppers. Um, so it's really important to have vitamin C rich foods into your diet um, to help regenerate and restore lost collagen. Uh, lycopene is a, is another one, and it's one that we don't hear of very often. But I imagine it's just as important as the others. Yeah, so lycopene is really unique. It's an antioxidant. It can be found in uh, red fruits and vegetables like tomatoes and red bell peppers and watermelon. Um, it's a very powerful antioxidant um, and research shows when consumed on a regular basis, it can actually help protect your skin against the UV rays. Uh, what about beta carotene? That's another one that we, we often hear of. How does that affect our, you know, help protect us from the sun? Yeah, so beta carotene, it's a real heavy hitter in this category. We might know it really well for eye health, um, but it's also really great for your skin. Um, so beta carotene can be found in carrots and squash and sweet potatoes and apricots. Um, so again, when consumed on a regular basis, uh, these fruits and vegetables can help protect your skin against UV damage. Yeah, and I see there's a color scheme there, right? I guess you're looking for those orange and, and, and yellow sort of red veg. I mean, those things really stand out right when you go shopping so that's something you can keep in mind um the other category you had was the you know blue purple black category what foods do we find in that category what nutrients 
Yeah, so these, um, this is a category called anthocyanins. Okay. Um, so this is what, it's a pigment which gives fruits and vegetables the purple and black and blue pigments. So uh, red cabbage and uh, red grapes and figs and blueberries, these types of fruits and vegetables have that powerful antioxidant. Um, and they've actually been studied for their role in cancer prevention, specifically in skin cancer. Um, so all the more reason to include anthocyanin-rich foods into your summer routine. Uh, just quickly, Natasha, when it comes to sunscreens, there's so many on the market. What should we be looking for? I mean, what's sort of the minimum SPF we should look for? Yeah, you want to look for anything between uh, 30 and 50, uh, maybe more if you're going to be out in the sun longer, of course. Like we mentioned, sunscreen and limiting sun exposure is our number one line of defense when it comes to the sun. Um, however, we can also add in some of these nutrients as well to help uh, give our skin added support against UV damage. Absolutely. Natasha, I appreciate the time today. Sorry about the technical difficulties, but thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. All right, take care. Uh, that is Natasha Perutis. She is a nutritionist with some great advice. So before you get out there buying sunscreen, remember to remember some of those great foods that she mentioned. We'll be back after this.